Amen. All right. So in, in, in part one, we looked at um, verse, verse 40, where now we see Pope John Paul II league with Reagan to go bring down the USSR. This was, this was the king of the north versus the king of the south. It was It was, um, was, it was Catholicism versus world atheism, okay? And, and, um, and, and this, this, and this was, and this was the first wedge to take down the United States. And, and, and we saw as well as that. When Rome falls, Islam falls as well. And then when Rome rises, Islam rises. All right? Because Islam is God's tool to bring down Rome. Amen? Okay. So, there's one thing we have to keep in mind is that history repeats. And that God's, God's work in, in all time repeats. And it's... And... And... And it all points down to the time in which we are in, even now. So now we're going to look at Revelation 10, verses 9, 9, to, 9 to 11. Because our line is dealing much more of the civil side. Because, because, because the church horn fell already. The Lord... Um, um, the Lord... The Lord showed us that this land is a two-horned power. It is, it um, it has two horns like a lamb, and and those two horns are 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 republicanism and um, Protestantism. Amen. But in the past, that horn already fell. That um, that that Protestant horn, Amen, fell already, and now the last horn that has to fall is the Republican one. That once that horn falls, Satan has full um, full 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 control, control of this land. Amen. Amen. Okay. So now let's read, read the, these verses. It says, and it says, and I went unto the angel and said unto him, give me the little book. And he said, he said unto me, take it and eat it up and it shall make thy um, belly, belly bitter, bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon and as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many um, peoples. Amen. And nations and tongues and kings. So now in Advent history, they ate at the midnight cry. On August 15th, 1844. This is where they ate, and it was a sweet sweet message tastes like honey at that time because now they finally saw that Christ Christ what um Christ was Christ will um return to this earth on October 22nd 1844 but then when that when that date came and Christ had not come to the earth but moved from the holy to the most holy this is when now it was a bitter experience and then, right at that time, the angel says, thou must prophesy again. But the key point, it says, they must speak again unto the nations, tongues, and kings. So now, this is speaking about future. And the same thing in which, in which was taught in this time must be taught again in this time as well. And that message must go forward before the kings of the earth. 
so that the Republican um, horn does not fall. Because if that horn falls, the United States falls with it. And then that is the end of this United States as we know it. All right. So now, as we said previously, is that the experience of the Advent people is shown by the parable of the ten virgins. Okay. So we'll go and read the, the, um, this, this now. We look at verse 1. It says, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Okay, so in 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 the year 1840, this is where they went forth to go and meet Christ. The wise the wise had ha, had their lamp and and oil, and the foolish had their lamp and their oil. All ten had lamp and oil when they went forth to meet meet um christ okay so now, and and then as it says there as well let's go on to the next quote gc 393 paragraph 4 it says the widespread reformation. reformation under the the um the proclamation amen of his soon coming answer to the going forth of the virgins so when the message um, spread everywhere that adds to the going forth of the virgins. Okay, Amen. So now that same thing is, is now is now repeated in our time because God's work in all time um, repeats now in our time in the last days because it's what Paul tells us. He says all these things happen upon whom whom of the ends are come. Whom? Yeah, yeah. Well, ends. Yeah, ends of the world, amen, yes. Ends of the world are come. So all these things are written now for the end of the world. Okay. So now from this point onward, this is now when, when um, the truth for this time went everywhere. It went to Europe, Africa, um, um, Australia. amen, and, and then South um. Amen. Amen, yes, as well. It went worldwide, and many people joined this Advent movement now for this time, just as they did on August 11, 1840, when God's Word was, 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 was fulfilled linked with Islam. Okay, so likewise here as well, they rose up, God's Word was was fulfilled here and it clearly showed that sister white was right just as right here it showed that miller's rules were right it on um, both times clearly set forth that god's work was right and the one in whom the lord uses at that time was right as well too okay so from this i'm on again everyone went back to seek the old paths okay so now we move on to 2007, 2008. So it follows the same, the, the same thing from the past history as well. So let's go down to GC 390. Yeah, 392.2. Can you read the, this quote, please? 392.2. GC 392.2. As early as 1842, the direction given in the prophecy to write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it has suggested to Charles Fitch the preparation of a prophetic chart to, illust to illustrate the visions of Daniel and the Revelation. The publication of this chart was regarded as a fulfillment of the command given by Habakkuk. Okay, we'll stop there. So, so now this is when this chart was made all right and it pointed forward to christ christ um returned to this earth in the year 1843 this is why it's called the 1843 chart so so now but but for our time the same thing um is shown is shown, shown forth as well but however in, in our time one main thing is is um focused on there and it's the 25 um Amen. The seven times. This, this, 
this light comes and 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 that light is the light that um all men taught at that time as well but however just as in the past men rose up to fight against the troops on the chart so likewise in this time men rose up to fight against the troops um the the, the truth on these these two charts as well so and and men fought it because because the rules in this truth still apply to this day showing that the leaders are 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 the cause for the scattering of the church and this is why many of the leaders fought against it because they are now um held held for their sin but however just as we we said that our line deals with the state side as well too the past line did not but our line does not because we're coming on to the end of the world all right the church fell first and then the state eve fell first and then who fell after adam, adam fell after amen so likewise for our time as well. This is why our line is focused um, so much, so much upon the civil side. Amen. Okay. So now, now let's go on to the next waymark. Oh, sorry, I forgot to bring bring this point up. And this is why, in at this time, there was a financial crisis because the church had a financial crisis as well, and and the church had it because they um, put aside the truth for for that time. So now in, in, in the church, there was a financial crisis. In the world, was a, there was a, there was a, excuse me, amen. Why? Because they opened the door to Rome um, at the start. Once Rome um, sets, sets her foot in, she, um, she, 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 Excuse me. She brings in much other sins with her. Once, once she is there, famine comes, loss comes, destruction comes, and this is exactly why all these things um, happen as well. And I forgot to add this point to it. And this is exactly why the Patriot Act was put into place because Rome came in, and this. Every point on this line, there's a fight against the Constitution. Every single one of them. Okay? And this law was just based upon, I forgot to add this point as well, Anti-Terrorism Act of 1996, which is called a death decree. If you go look at the law, that's literally what they call it as well. You just go type that in online, it's literally called that. But anyways, so all these... All these things are here to show show the fall of the civil side of the United States of America. All right, and this time was just a foretaste of another um, another another financial crisis that will come in the future. Also, all right. So now let's go to 2014 and 15. Let's go on to that heading. I'm going to read back chapter two, verse three. It says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So just as in Advent history, they learned that they were in the tarrying time. And at this time, there was a disappointment. So likewise in our history as well. The Lord taught us the very same thing that we are in the same time as them. And we met also with a disappointment as well. Why? Because many people turned away from the truth at that time so at this time there was a shaking and then there were two groups um there there was two groups one one is wise and one is foolish all right and now and but um it says that they all slumbered and slept but um i don't have the quote here it says that they, they sleep in two separate ways. The wise sleep searching for clearer light, but the foolish sleep in, 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 un, 
in unconcern and abandonment of faith. All right. So there are some who have left the faith at this time and they left left the faith here over over certain things. It was over the um the the Tarian time. Amen. And and over the um the insects in in jo Joel 2. Amen. Yes. So um okay, yes. So now we'll look at that for for a short for a short time here as well because one group said that those those four insects was Rome, but then one group said that those four four were um were Islam. But now now but now excuse me, but now we um see and see and know that it is both of them. So now let's go to Joel chapter one verses four, six, and then Joel two verse twenty-five. Shall I can you read that please? Joel one and verse four. That which the palm worm hath left hath the can has the locust eaten, and that which the locust hath left hath the cankworm eaten, and that which the cankworm hath left hath the caterpillar eaten. For a nation has come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. 225. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the cankerworm and the caterpillar and the pommel worm, my great army, which I sent among you. Okay, so God calls them his great army. And they have cheek teeth like a great lion. So now, now let's go see who the Lord calls, calls this, this um, great lion. Amen. Now let's go on to Daniel chapter 7. Verse 4, it says, the first was like a lion. And we know that this lion was, was, um, was Babylon. Amen. Which we know now points down to Rome. Now, now let's go on to the next verses. No. Um, amen. Yes. All right. So now let's. Going on to the next, next verses, which I can read the, the three. Revelation 9, verses 7 to 9. It says, and the, sh and the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And on her heads were, as it were, crowns like, crowns like gold. And their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of a woman. And their teeth were as the, the teeth of lions. Okay, you can stop there. So they both have teeth like lions. And the Lord says, these are my great army. Because now the Lord uses them both to punish sin. And now this is what the Lord, Lord says, says, says here. It says his, it says his, his restraining power. A amen. Will be in a um, measure Removed from the agencies of evil, so that a train of circumstances, circumstances. will will arise. Uh, arise, which will punish sin with sin. So this is what the Lord does um um throughout all time. He uses sin to punish sin, and and Rome, Rome, the Lord, the Lord uses Rome to go and fight sin, and the Lord uses Islam to go and fight sin as well and this is what our line teaches us from the very start that the lord used rome to punish sin and then the lord used islam to punish rome which is punishing sin okay because of men's works okay so now in this same time as we, we said that our time is to destroy the u.s um um u.s constitution, constitution. All right. 
This is Satan's work now. It's to go and take down the supreme law of this, this land, okay? And Satan um, went for it to go and um, attack it again with, with the same sex um, um, laws and so forth, all right? So now in 2015, the Supreme Court ruled and, and said that said that the um said that the constitution amen. guarantees a right to same sex marriage. All right. And this is a direct attack against the two things in which the Lord raised up from the start, marriage and the Sabbath. Satan works the same way as Christ works because he says I will be like the most high. So Christ first made marriage and then he went and made the Sabbath. So Satan will fight the very same two in the very same way. He will start with marriage and then he'll go after and fight the Sabbath as well. All right. This is how he works throughout all time as well. Because, because he just wants to be like the most high and then he will attack the same things in which the most high has set up. So now, so now this is Satan's work now. And this is why, why why excuse me this is why we see now that that gays are um are now pushed on every front everything of of that of that of that lifestyle is now pushed so but uh, yeah so now so now this is just a um a slight towards towards the um towards the supreme law of this land. All right. And now at the same time as well, the Adventist Church um this um fellowship Jeff over the same thing here, the 25 um 20 20. Amen. So now just as um just as the Sunday churches closed their door here, the Adventist church closed their 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 excuse me their, their door, door here to the messages. Amen. Because because excuse me because these truths show forth their sin. So now the next the next point. Midnight cries the next. Next point in which, which we, in which we shall um, sh in which we shall um, meet, and and now. And. And it is based upon the past things as well. So as as we have here is that, the Advent movement they ate, and they then were brought to a. A, a bitter experience. Amen. So likewise, the same thing will, will happen. These two are yet are yet future. So these things we have not met as it. But however, we have um much videos upon these these two points. Amen. So now let's go read um, GC 400, paragraph 1 and um, 2. So that which happened then will happen now as well in, in, this, um, in this day. Read the quote, please. GC 400, paragraph 1. In the parable of Matthew 25, the time of waiting and slumber is followed by the coming of the bridegroom. This was in accordance with the, with the arguments just presented, both from prophecy and from the types. They carried strong conviction of their truthfulness, and the midnight cry was heralded by thousands of believers. GC 400, paragraph 2. Like a tidal wave, the movement swept over the land. From city to city, from village to village, and into remote country places it went, 
until the waiting people of God were fully aroused. Fanaticism disappeared before this proclamation like early frost before the rising sun. Believers saw their doubt and perplexity removed, mm -hmm. and hope and courage animated their hearts. The work was free from those extremes which are ever manifested when there is human excitement without the controlling influence of the Word and Spirit of God. It was similar in character to those sessions of humili Season. seasons mm -hmm. of humiliation and returning unto the Lord, which among ancient Israel followed messages of reproof from his servants. It bore the characteristics that marked the work of God in every age. There was little ecstatic joy, but rather deep searching of heart, confession of sins, and forsaking of the world. A preparation to meet the Lord was the burden of agonizing spirits. There, there was persevering prayer and unreserved consecration to God. Amen. So when this time comes... Fanaticism disappears. All those, all those false things in the church now, all of them will disappear. Every single one of them will, will go away, and and God's word will be made 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 that one point that everybody will 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 seek to at that time. All right, and and this time points forward um, straightly towards the CSL to when this civil Sunday Sunday law is made. It speaks directly of this point, just as the midnight cry spoke directly of the tenth day of the seventh month. It, it pointed forward and show, show men without a doubt what is soon to pass. So, so, um, so, so as it says there, it says it went from city to city and went throughout the whole, whole earth. So shall it be here too. But however, I won't stay on this point, this point so much because, because, because we have um, written things on it and and have made um and have made um videos yeah yeah on it as well that speak on it um more thoroughly amen yes because there's many things that will happen here many many things that will happen here but now let's go on to the last waymark CSO and this is. Based on the past history as well. So now, let's go to G um, yeah, GC three nine nine point four. We we don't have to read read that quote now, but um, we just so just as in this time Christ moves to the most holy place into his next phase of his work at the CSL. Jesus Christ is going to move to his um, yeah, next phase, next phase of his work in the most holy place, which is the um, investigative judgment of the living. All right. Just as Christ changed here, he changes here too. This one was the investigative judgment IJD of the dead, and but this one is now for the living. Okay. And... And then now let's go on to GC fifty three paragraph one. Um, yeah, paragraph one. Then we read five seventy four point one, and then we'll we'll stop there because now when this law is put 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 into place, this is now when this United States will be a totally different land. It will be a changed United States, and and at this time here. This is where now the Sunday movement will be very, very, very strong. All right, so now, Michelle, can you read GC 53.1, please? In the, in the early part of the fourth century, 
The Emperor Constantine issued a decree making Sunday a public festival throughout the Roman Empire. The Day of the Sun was reverenced by his pagan subjects and was honored by Christians. It was the emperor's policy to unite the conflicting interests of heathenism and Christianity. He was urged to do this by the bishops of the church who, inspired by ambition and thirst for power, per perceived that if the same day was observed by both Christians and heathens, it would promote the, the nominal acceptance of Christianity by pagans and thus advance the power and glory of the church. But while many God-fearing Christians were gradually led to regard Sunday as possessing a great degree of sacredness, they still held the true Sabbath as the holy of the Lord and observed it in obedience to the fourth commandment. Okay, and can you read the next one, please? Royal edicts, general councils, and church ordinances sustained by secular power were the steps by which the pagan festival attained its, its position of honor in the Christian world. The first public measure enforcing Sunday observance was the law enacted by Constantine, AD 321. This, this edict required townspeople to rest on the venerable day of the sun but permitted countrymen to continue their agricultural pursuits. Though virtually a heathen statute, it was enforced by the emperor after his nom nominal acceptance of Christianity. Okay, so when this law was passed in 321 AD, CSL is just a repeat of this history. As we said from the very beginning, history repeats itself. History repeats itself. The Lord does not repeat things as no great... Um, Great, no great c consequence. Amen, yes. So, and when, when this law is passed, as the quote says, it's the first public measure. And this first measure here, here is, will be successful. Many people will laud this law because people will ask for this law just as they will ask for the Sunday law. They they urge men to go and put forth this, this law. And once this takes place, the United States will change forever. And this is where now, because they pass this law, the United States will be hit again. And it will be 10 times worse than what happened in 2001. It's going to be so much worse because they went further into their sin. So therefore, the Lord has to go further into the chastisement. And once they make this law, it's almost no turning back. They, they can, but however, they, they have so linked up themselves with Rome, it will be difficult to separate themselves from Rome. So once this law passes, it's, everything's going to change. But the change really begins at the midnight crime. Once this time comes, the, this land will, will, will start you start hearing them speaking more and more like a dragon. It, it, it will change greatly, and um, this earth will look so different. Money will not be the same. Church will not be the same. The state will not be the same. TV will not be the same. All things in, in which we have loved, you start seeing it on, you, you'll see it drop down even faster than, than it is now. So... Um, last, last points, I'll just keep, keep this in mind that our time is just a repeat of history. It's a repeat of Advent history. We have to understand the old past because Christ calls this the good way. And this is where we have to walk in it and we will find rest. So, and just as, um, the kings of this earth will, will push Sunday, the king of heaven will push the Sabbath. And at this time, just as they received light, light upon the Sabbath, right here at this time as well, this is when the Lord is going to send even more light upon the Sabbath to fight against the falsehood that is being pushed here about Sunday. So, so um, please keep this, keep, keep, keep this simple rule in, in mind. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, forever. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. The Lord does not repeat things that are of no great um no great um, consequence. Amen. Thank you. It says history repeats itself. And 
all these things we have to keep in mind and, 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 and be sure upon it. Yet again, if you have not read the book that Jeff wrote called, called The Time of the End, please go read it. If you, if you don't have it, we will try to send you one um, um, so, that, so that you might read it for yourself. And please go in, um, go back and search out these things for yourself. Do not take man's word. Go back to God's word and, and um, see if these things are so. But with that being said, let us close with a word of prayer. Merciful Father in heaven, O oh Lord, we thank you for this day, O oh Lord, and for all that, all that you have done. Please, Father, I ask you may help us, O oh Lord, to, to stand fast on your word. Help us, Father, to, um, to uh, follow the light, light for, light for now, Lord, so that, so that we might not fall, Lord. Please, Father, Save us from self and and help us, O oh Lord, to look more like you, O oh Lord. And and we ask ask all these things in your son's name we pray. Amen.